I thought I would do a bit of multitasking um, and chat to you on my way to work. Um, so this will be my week 30 update. So we're in the final 10 week countdown now. Oh my God. Um, which is incredibly frightening because the baby can come it was considered full term any time from 37 weeks so actually it can come any time in seven weeks time which if you break it down even further we have um, my stepdaughter every other weekend so potentially we'll only have her another three times yeah yeah three times so it will be just us three how crazy is that um what has been happening so it's been quite a baby related week really um the weekend just gone we started i say we i was supervising started decorating the nursery um i wanted a gray and cream theme as i've discussed before gray and cream stars um the paint that we've or the color there's one wall that's gray the colour that we've used is actually one that we've used in the kitchen um, and we had some left over it turned out we didn't actually have enough um, so I had to go and get some more but I don't know whether it's because it's in the little room so the light is different but it looks more beigey than grey uh, so I don't know what we're going to do about that because I'm not wholly sold on it and I don't know whether I just need to change the light bulb maybe and at the moment the wardrobe's in the middle of the room so that is blocking a lot of the light um so maybe it's that or maybe i'm just being pedantic and just need to get over it um we'll see mm. um but it's still not quite finished so all the walls are painted half of the glossing is done halfway around the room um it's the rest of the bottom of the room and the windowsill and the door still needs glossing um and then we've got a decal sticker um to put up on the wall and um, that says dream big little one with stars and moon on um we also started our antenatal course this week um and I, I do admit there was an element of me as well as well as mark that you just think i am so tired now you know i'm out doing hypnobirthing i'm out doing yoga I really could do with just an evening in I'm trying to recuperate and everything um, and it's two and a half hours and we've got a full-on full day of it this weekend coming however can I just say um, the bumps to babies antenatal class so it's a privately run class um, it's not an NHS one um, it was brilliant really really good I just felt so informed and a lot more relaxed and dare I say excited when I left um, I didn't feel like I couldn't ask any stupid questions um, and a lot of my questions are stupid um, but Sean who's the leader very down-to-earth very very practical um, very easy to talk to and yeah could ask her absolutely anything um, so that was really really good it's us and two other couples the groups are normally around eight couples but for whatever reason like time of the year location the other um quite a few people have then opted to have private sessions rather than a group session um so yeah that's what it, it's quite a small and compact group but we you know we got on well um lots of different circumstances as to how we've all become parents but we're all pretty much first time parents um, but then again Mark's not um, but he still found it informative um, was asking questions and even just practical bits like so Sean um, has a lot of involvement at the hospital where I will be given birth hopefully <laughs> all being well um, so she was talking us through like what car park you're parking how the parking charges work um because they're different if you're having a child um you can actually get your ticket validated so you don't then have to pay 24 48 hours worth of car parking um 
and how that works and how that happens and where you need to go and at what point you call your midwife team um, which was a slight concern of mine how do I know that's when I need to ring um, how do I know when I'm not too early um, but particularly not too late because I have had a friend who it's not because she left it too late things just progressed a lot quicker than was ever anticipated and she ended up delivering at home and it wasn't a planned home birth um, and for my first child I no, that <laughs> just scared the hell out of me. Um, so things like that we could talk about. Um, and one of the key things that actually does keep being repeated to me by both my midwife, the hypnobirthing teacher mentioned it last week, and Sean said it again on um, on Monday night, was that you can go and see the midwifery led birthing unit, so that you're not so you you're familiar with it essentially which makes sense again so the whole premise of everything that I'm doing um, is about being relaxed during labour the more relaxed you are um, it's all to do with your hormones and chemical imbalance there's a hormone called oxytocin one of the things you're really encouraged to do is actually to go and see where you're going to give birth um, so that's what we're hopefully going to be able to do now. There's no guarantees. Obviously, you don't know what it's like. Are they too busy? Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. So we did get a chance to go in. It was great. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to film the the room for you purely because. Um, a lady then there was only one room spare that they were then showing me and literally just looked down there had a quick look um, a lady came in and was was um so needed that room urgently so rushed out to let her go in um that was a bit daunting to see potentially what i'm going to be going through because she did not look comfortable but unfortunately the baby was back to back and they knew that um but good on earth they're still trying to to deliver it nonetheless um, but yeah so it's interesting I'll explain more about the room when I get in the car so in terms of the room it was quite small but it was one of their smaller birthing rooms which is absolutely fine um, and in it was was a bed but it didn't look anything like a hospital bed at all it looked like a normal bed um, there was a reclining chair which is then for your birthing partner to be able to have some sleep in um, and the birthing pool in the corner which looks very similar to a jacuzzi pool um, it was all very dim lights um, fake candles um, there's gas and air point on the wall which you then have access to because that's one of the only pain reliefs you can actually have if you have on a water birth uh, on a midwifery led unit if you need anything stronger then you, you will need to go to the delivery suite but it's only next door so if things don't go to plan then obviously I can be transferred but my my plan is still to aim there um, so all in all the room was really really relaxing um, and I can see that yeah that's still the choice for me um, of where I would like to go if um, everything goes to plan and now I know exactly where it is um, and I know what I'm expecting a little more so that should hopefully ease the nerves a little bit so oxytocin oxytocin is the is a happy hormone um, so you, as I said you get it when you, you're eating things like chocolate um, and it's also the hormone that gets pumped into you should you have um, or need an induction. So that is what is it, you have an oxytocin drip. Um, and it's high levels of oxytocin that actually triggers labor. Um, which is why if you do certain activities, they say that can, that can bring on labor. Um, the enemy of oxytocin is adrenaline. So the fight or flight fear hormone can kill oxytocin and it all dates back to see this is why i like all this stuff because there's a lot of science behind it and it makes complete and utter sense but it all dates back to like proper cavewoman days 
whereby if she was out happened to be getting her own food and she came across a lion or she was in a dangerous situation and she was about to give birth her fight or flight hormone would kick in um, and the body would then know that um, it wasn't safe to deliver so the labour it would actually stop the labour until she was at a point where it was safe um, however in today's modern society we are bombarded wrongly wrongly bombarded with TV shows and big dramatised scenes of labours of screaming women um, on a bed which is the most un it is the hardest way to deliver a baby anyway um, because of how a baby's got to come and that's a whole different lesson um, and you are intrinsically trained because of, again all the stories you're also told by people sharing their really unhelpful birth stories you are trained to be scared really and obviously when you are scared that's adrenaline um, so your body contractions naturally happen they are your uterus pushing the baby out they will happen and the baby and your body can deliver your baby even if you're in a coma you do not have to do anything you do not necessarily have to push there will be times when your body will tell you that you need to push to give the baby a bit of a helping hand but actually naturally you do not need to push the body can do it for itself however so if you've got a muscle that is contracting, 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 if you're then scared, when you're scared, you tense up. When you're like fearful or fighting something, you tense up. And you're gonna be tensing up against those contractions, which is obviously then gonna hurt more. I'm not saying contractions are painless. I don't know, I've not had them yet. I will report back <laughs> in perhaps 10 weeks time. Um, but they will make it far more painful um, and far worse a situation and potentially make it a more drawn out situation um, if you end up having too much adrenaline and killing some of your contractions and killing some of your oxytocin um, so that is essentially everything that I am doing so as part of the hit my birthing I do meditation every night by meditation, no, I'm not sitting there cross-legged because by all means, I can barely walk at the moment, let alone sit cross-legged. Um, but it's all about being able to, mind over matter really, being able to take your mind someplace else. So, um, we have a track that counts you down into your own little world really. Um, and talks to you and just have a mindfulness if anyone practices mindfulness it's, it's along the same lines as that so you're focusing on the minute detail in your head um, so for me that is I go to Bali every night where we had our honeymoon I go and have a massage on the beach every night and then I get up and I go and swim in the sea with the fishes which happens in Greece but obviously it's my head I can mix two countries if the hell I want to um, and I do and I do every night um, and it sends me off to sleep every single night um, and it's practicing those techniques so I can try and use them like to my advantage during labour so if I need to take myself off to distract myself I can the whole point is um, it also then educates your birthing partner one what you're doing and how to keep you in that frame of mind keep you positive keep you calm but to allow you to do that they have to take on a lot more responsibility of the birth really so when it comes to things like decisions ideally the mum does not want to be interrupted the mum does not need to be asked oh do you want an epidural now are you in a lot of pain because that is just going to kill me massage and barley completely. Um, so it's things like talking through the pain relief options, 
beforehand so Mark can understand the signals when actually you know what yeah I am going to need that um, or no she said she didn't want that before she came in here no we're going to stick with that no she's fine or doing things like massage to try and relax you or um, there are different you learn different indicators and um, so when he puts his hand on my shoulder that is meant to signal that I need to relax um, and the more he does it or the harder he presses the deeper I will relax um, and things like that really um, it's also concentrating on your breathing because again if you're concentrating on things like that you're not focusing on the discomfort um, and you if you breathe correctly you can actually aid the movement of the baby down like the birthing canal as it's talked about um, and again it's focusing on something else um, so the baby in terms of its journey you, is actually essentially a U-bend has got to come down which is why a bed is not practical at all uh, in terms of lying down on your back on it because it's actually got to come down and then come up to get out which we well, haven't got gravity on your side it's you know it's not rocket science really um, so what positions you can get in to, to ease the delivery so they're the things that we're learning at antenatal um, and hypnobirthing helps with that as well about keeping you moving because the more you move again that can kind of speed things up um, aids the baby and again it also distracts you but by having like a room that is set up like a spa so in my head now I'm, I know where I'm going to be going I'm not I know what the room looks like so I know like I don't know it's not it doesn't look like a hospital room so I haven't got that apprehension in my head um it does look like a spa so that's it now I'm packing a bag and I'm going away for a spa weekend in my head and that is what I'm going to concentrate on um hypnobirthing also talks about positive birth affirmations so again because of everything that we have been kind of bombarded with um, in the media we are intrinsically again trained to think I don't know if I can do this this is going to be really really painful um, I don't want to do this yada 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 but like with anything that you have in life if you actually have a bit of a glass half full approach you know you can normally get better outcomes um, so posted up around the house which is what we've been encouraged to do by the hypnobirthing teacher um, we have things called positive aff affirmations so they're statements that you just end up seeing throughout your day I also have an mp3 track which I play in the car and sometimes play at work in my headphones um, if I'm doing other stuff so that again they're statements that just kind of end up filtering through to your brain and they're part of the, hip, the, the mindfulness CD that we listen to every night so they're things like your body is built for this your baby knows how to birth itself you can do this um, you you are a woman, you're powerful, um, your body has done an amazing thing of growing a baby for nine months, so it will be able to bring it into the world as well, and you can make up your own, so we've made up some of our own, so for me it's, um, as it's happening, it's exciting, it's the baby's birthday, um, labour is the process to meeting our baby, um, if I'm calm, baby's calm um, and then that's nicer for the baby um, I can do this I'm built for this and all those kind of things which I know everyone just thinks I'm being utterly ridiculous but if this is what I need to do and if this works for me then so be it go sit and swivel I really don't care um, this is my labor it's my me doing it not you um, and yeah, I do believe in this kind of stuff. I do believe that 
if you go to a job interview thinking you're not going to get it, then you're not going to get it because they are the vibes you're going to give, give off. If you go into an exam thinking you're going to fail, you will fail because, again, you've already preempted, so you're not even going to bother trying. So the same way, if I go into this thinking this is going to be really, really painful and horrific, it will be really painful and horrific because I'll almost make it so to confirm my belief and make sure that I'm right. Um, so yeah, so that is essentially everything that hypnobirthing and pretty much what these antenatal classes are all about. So for some people, there'll be hippy jippy stuff. For me, it's because I like all this positive motivational speaking and that's my bag. Um, but each to their own. It's not going to be for everybody. Um, but for me, this is this is the approach I'm taking. Um, and yeah, I'd also like a water birth. I think that will be far more, far more relaxing and it is a natural form of pain relief. When I have a bad back, I naturally run a bath. So why would I not have a hot bath if I'm in pain with labour? It would, it just makes sense. Um, and leading on from that about the whole oxytocin thing, that is also why midwives try and keep you at home for as long as possible before bringing you in. Um, because it is known that obviously the white coat syndrome can encourage adrenaline somewhat. Um, and adrenaline is the hormone which we do not want um so if you can stay at home you're in your own environment then you're far more likely to actually progress your labor quicker because you are more relaxed um, and your oxytocin levels will be higher um, your oxytocin levels will tend to drop um, in the car journey to the hospital and when you get to hospital um, so the shortest time they can have you at the hospital so literally you need to be there the time that they that you need them um the better really um i'll see if i can try and link another video i'm sure there is one on the hospital website um at what about what a midwifery birthing unit looks like so you can actually have a look um and see what the difference is in terms of medical teams um it's a really tiny team again to try and create that whole homely environment i think the whole premise of it is it's meant to be like a home birth but in a hospital um which is kind of the best of both worlds in in my head for me anyway i didn't want a home birth especially being my first child i i would panic that something would go wrong and we wouldn't have the the facilities to to assist with that and i would never forgive myself there's also the mess that would bother me somewhat um my oxytocin levels would really dip if i thought that there was going to be any mess for me to clean up after um but in turn yeah in terms of mid midwifery led birthing unit is exactly that so all you'll get is one maybe two midwives and that is it there are no doctors other than the um you don't get a nephritis or anything like that because you don't have epidurals or those kind of pain reliefs on mid midwifery led birthing unit at the moment as far as i'm aware the only pain relief i'll be able to be offered is gas and air um or paracetamol um on midwife on mlbu as it's used as it's called sorry um however on delivery suite that is your traditional birthing unit so that is what you would picture as a hospital room with a traditional hospital bed um with doctors and ethetists midwives as well um and they tend to be for higher risk more complicated labors or if you do just want a really traditional labor um that's completely up to you if that works for you absolutely fine um but for me i think the more relaxed approach is the way forward um she did mention um because you're encouraged to bring in your own kind of soundtracks and music and things to relax in MLBU. I thought there was a docking station, but she did say they don't have them anymore. Um, so I need to get our speaker charged up and I'll get that packed in my overnight bag, um, which is the other development. So I've started packing that as well. Oh my God, it's all beginning to happen. And it's going to be a super long video. Apologies. Um, but baby's pack bag is all packed. Baby doesn't really need a lot, I'm hoping. Um, so the change bag is all packed. I just need to sort out its outfits 
um which i've picked i just need to wash them um because you're meant to wash all their clothes in non-bio before they wear them for the first time because their skin isn't used to the outside environment <coughs> so i still need to do all that um and my bag is getting there slowly so i'm kind of packing it just as i go along there's still bits and bobs that I need to, to buy. Um, so I'm kind of just grabbing those as and when I'm in places where they are. Um, you also, again, encouraged to bring kind of food and drink. There are food and drink, obviously, available at the hospital. But one, Mark ain't going nowhere. If um, <laughs> when things progress, there is no way I'm being left on my own with that. Um, but secondly, you're essentially going to be running a marathon. So you need stuff to keep your energy levels up um so i'll do a full in-depth what is in my bag kind of video but it's things like still sports drinks you're gonna need um i've packed some um fruit cracker things because i have been living off them throughout my pregnancy which help my sickness they really curb my nausea whenever i feel nausea come and it's something i can just grab and go so even if i'm driving and all of a sudden i get the wave of nausea which that is the the worst feeling because you then also get a sense of panic of oh my god i'm i'm driving what am I, what am i gonna do if i'm gonna be sick i've got nothing and i'm driving i can't be sick and drive at the same time um but you can then just grab them as you're going and nibble and that then te seems to curb the nausea but gas and air can also make you sick um as can labor in general so i've got a pack of them um high energy high, high sugar sweets again to keep your energy up so things like jelly babies um i was encouraged to bring nuts and raisins as well jelly babies seemed a bit more appealing though yeah. bad mum already um let's have an obese kid um so yeah so things like that are also in my bag but i'll do like i say i'll do full kind of bag but i do now need to put the if I do this in the video, when I edit it back, I will remember to put the speaker on charge and then to pack the speaker ready to go and make sure that it is compatible with my new phone. Um, but yeah, that is everything for now. As I said about the nursery, um, so I'll insert some clips as to um, how it's progressing. I'm hoping we might be able to try and finalise it um, a bit more either this week, this weekend maybe not we're quite busy um but we've still got 10 weeks we've got time so when um, we can start kind of pulling things together now but it's it is certainly becoming more and more real so i said i'll give you a nursery update here we are the glossing is now all done the wall is all painted we've just got the windowsill um to gloss the door and everything has now been finished and wardrobe is um back in place see what i mean about the wall color from this light actually if i come from the window side then it does look gray or well, certainly grayer if you then compare it to the bed sheets but if you look between the two sorry it doesn't know whether to focus on my finger or the bed sheets it does look a bit more i don't know beige in my eyes but i think we're going to stick with it because at the end of the day it's one wall for the sake of a whole tin of paint and more time it'll be absolutely fine but if i take you across to the spare room which it tends to be what we call dad and deb's room because this is where my dad and stepmom stay look at the state of that oh it's just baby galore um so in here is the changing bag um and i've actually packed quite a bit of stuff i just got to put the baby's clothes in um, and then we're ready to go um and there's some clothes over there but it looks worse than it is just because that is everything out of the wardrobe and that and actually in terms of outfits i've only got six newborn and six naught three the rest are things like sleeping bags and bibs and uh plain white vests from primark um there are some christmasy bits in age six to nine um I've also then got this lampshade from Next, which I absolutely loved. Mark hates. Um, so I need to take that back um, and get a new lampshade. And there's things like our cot um, that we've still got to build and the mattress. But hopefully he reassured me that it will be sorted this week. Oh, and the car seat. Car seat, we need to get in the car and get ready to go. 
and then finally I'll just do a quick bump update um so there is a side profile it actually looks like it's gone down today um which is strange because I looked absolutely my hoosive over the weekend um and then yeah it's all pretty much to the front um I do feel it's beginning to drop slightly um although the midwife at the antenatal class oh I don't know if you just saw that that was a bit of a kick you proper went for it yeah we're talking about you um and it was at the bottom and um, the midwife at the class said it's actually quite early for it to start dropping so perhaps it hasn't but I just feel like I'm breathing easier that I have a bit more space up here um I don't feel so full all the time um I am full when I eat the food does still sit up here I find um but I just feel I have a bit more space up here and particularly Saturday I felt really heavy down here really really heavy um a lot of pressure when I was walking um on my hips and on on my pelvis but who knows we will see um we've got a few more weeks to go yet so i think that is all for an update um and i will catch you next time